So today we're going to add on one final thing before we are finished with our beam design project, and that is for us to find the information and put it in MD solids. So the first thing that you're going to do is create a Word document, and I used a header with my name on it. That way, when all of us are printing at the same time, we know whose is whose. And you should have four pages that are going to be created. The first one I'm going to do with you, which is for the interior beam that we calculated together during class. So first I'm going to open MD solids. And when you're looking for MD solids, there's a, on the school computers, there's a folder that says IT PLTW. And in there will be MD solids. Okay. So now that I've found MD solids, I'm going to go to determinant beams. And I'm going to create that 18 foot beam. Make sure you are changing your units into feet. So it's 18 feet and it's supported at the absolute zero on the left and at the 18 foot location on the right and hit enter. So with our interior beam, we have a uniform load um, that stretches all the way across and it is 1000 pounds per linear foot. Okay, double check that this is in feet and this is pounds per foot. And then we hit enter. Okay, the first screen, we are gonna go ahead and capture that. So I am going to click on the beam modules diagrams that just showed up. And then on my keyboard, I'm gonna hold down the alt button and my print screen. That selects just this one window and I can hit control V and put it into my Word document. Okay, I'm gonna shrink that down because I have three other things I need to put on this page for the interior beam. Okay, and I am going to make a space and then hit enter because the next two items I'm going to put here and here. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a cross section of the I beam that I have chosen to support all of this weight. To do that, I'm going to go into the options tab. And I am going to choose design, okay? And then we need to go to allowable stresses. This is gonna let us choose what kind of beam we're gonna be using. And we are going to be using a steel, there we go, A36 structural, okay? So it's the first steel listed in that drop down menu. We're going to change the tension, compression, and the shear strength to 24,000. And you're gonna do this for all of your beams, okay? So you're gonna use steel A36 structural and turn the tension, compression, and shear to 24,000. Make sure your units is in PSI and then hit okay. So that's just us getting our beams ready to go. And now we're gonna create the cross section. This is when we're gonna cut it across. And for doing that, we select cross sections at, on the top tab. And then we are going to go to standard, US customary, flange shapes is a W because we're doing a wide flange. So now you have all of this empty information. I'm gonna come down to the window down at the bottom left-hand corner, and I'm gonna scroll down and find the beam that we selected based on our math. Looking at our final design, we chose a W12 by 16. So I'm going to select that. And then I'm also going to make sure that I have A36 steel. Nothing has happened yet. Okay. But what I want to do is hit the compute button. These numbers were filled in, but we're going to hit compute and it's going to show us what that beam actually looks like. It also gets us this little guy right here which has all of the variable information that we need um, for any additional calculations. This screen and this screen are ones that I wanna put onto my Word document. So again, I'm gonna click on that. I'm gonna hold down the Alt Print Screen for my keyboard and then use a Control V to paste it in there. I'm gonna shrink it down and then I'm going to do the same thing, Alt, print screen, Control-V. I might have to shrink that down. 
Okay. So one thing you'll be able to notice right away is that I changed the margins on my Word document. So it's a half inch from each edge. I went to page layout margins and put that in. And then I also put in my header. So I have this blank space right here, and that's for the last thing that we are going to create. So I'm going back to my beam diagram. I'm going to go ahead and close those other two. Close that one. And I'm going to close that. And then I'm going to come back to my original beam moment diagrams. And I'm going to select options because I want to see the slope and the deflection diagrams. Okay. Notice they kind of have these weird things. What you're going to want to do is make sure that this says degrees and the bottom left corner says um, inches. So once you have that, it's going to show you the rest of your map, your information. I'm going to alt print screen and put that in there. Okay. So now that you have all these done for your interior beam, you're ready to go back and create the next page for your exterior e -R -I -O -R beam. And you're going to be getting those four images for each of your beams or girders. Now, a quick reminder, in order to clear that, you go back. This is not an empty beam. You have to go all the way back, file, and reset. Then go through all of that again for your exterior beam and your two girders.